All right. Well, in continuation of the GC8 2.5RS Dugger X swap uh, saga, we are going to do a full manual brake conversion, essentially. You've kind of shifted it that way already. Yes. But um, we're actually going to follow through and, and uh, do, it the right, do it the right way. No, this is 100% the right way. Okay, Not cool. the right way. Okay. The right way. <laughs> I'm not used to doing shit the right way. <clears throat> so from what I understand, we're going to delete the booster and all these goofy lines. That is 100% correct, my Sweet. dear brother. Outstanding. We've got... We always like left clutter. Less clutter Chase brother. Bays. Chase Bays. Brake booster and ABS delete kit. So this replaces all of that nonsense and all of the lines across the firewall with all of this really pretty Teflon coated and adjustable proportioning valve. You got the, you know, all this Super nonsense. Nylon high pressure lines. I've heard the directions are not great, but I've taken pictures from their website. They have pictures that kind of show you where things go. So. Uh, like all these fittings are beautiful, like billet. It's actually a really, really nice kit. Hmm. Um, a lot of people do this if you have like a rally car or if you have a show car and you're trying to clean up your engine bay. Um, for me, like I'm okay. across it and I've got a bunch of faulty stuff because some of it's 2000, some of it's 06. Whoever did the swap didn't swap everything over from the 06. It so just doesn't link up. Doesn't like it. And the cover that was on the ABS pump was broken when I got the car and there was water getting into the electronics, so I'm sure that... <laughs> so that's probably, a whole other... <laughs> probably fried the ABS pump to begin with. So this right. will take care of all of that. We're gonna start here. And literally all of this, this, this nonsense here, all over there, that's that whole so thing, cool. all the lines that go down, it replaces all of that. <clears throat> cool. I thought I'd heard of Chase Bays before. And that makes sense now. I was like, Chase Bays, that sounds right, but I thought they were just like, sh like showy stuff. They are. A, a lot of their stuff is really showy, and, and a lot of what I've seen is like. But that says Willwood. Yeah, it's Willwood. This is a Willwood master cylinder. Mark so. already dirtied it up. I did. Damn it. <laughs> well, sweet. That's why we can't have nice things. That's right. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's remove all the crap. Let's tear into this thing and uh, make it look racy. Yes. Hopefully we'll make it look easy. Yeah. Good lord, I hope so. But I doubt it. Yeah. Because I'm a fan idiot. And I was up until one wrenching, or two, wrenching on a 69 GMC, so... I'm not exactly the best kind of help for this, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> this is exciting. Trash. I would imagine, you've been, you don't want to usually touch the brakes, but when you do, you do it very violently, and I think this will help that happen a little bit. Boy, I hope so. Boy, I hope so. Boy, <laughs> I'm getting sick of driving off the track every time I'm going to hit the truck. <laughs> you know what is super respectable about that, though? What? You didn't dial your driving back at f***ing all to accommodate your <laughs> shit brakes. You're like, no, maintain full send, maintain course. Okay, so... Mark's already unhooked these two lines, and then he kind of got this loose, or kind of, he did get that loose, and then, no. Wait, yes. Three eighths? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. So right now, Mark is currently under the dash after a thermonuclear attack in my garage. He shit himself and he made me want to vomit. You look like you're having a great time. Oh, don't worry, Mark. I'm not going to shoot your stomach here. I'm just going to. Did you break free? Please. 
Please tell me you broke free. Ow! That looks extremely uncomfortable. Oh, it sucks so bad, dude. My big stupid hands don't fit anywhere under here. Dude, that wheel is so good. So this is out. The story of a girl. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. See if I can't pull the brake booster out from behind this. That way I can inspect all these lines and stuff. This step is probably not necessary. Sweet. Booster out. Oh yeah. That's not light. Can get the light. <laughs> I'm looking for, for Sona, I guess. So what's next on these uh what's next on this thing? Are there some lines underneath we gotta unhook or? There are. So I think we gotta jack it up and yeah. there's a line that goes underneath here. I need the light here. So there's one that goes over to this brake caliper, then there's one that goes over there to that brake caliper. Not exactly sure where they go after. Hey, you can probably 3M tape them. Okay. Good. Hold on one second. Let me go one more box on the other side. And so it's just a couple of brackets that are holding to the lower side. Uh, it's like a strap. <laughs> this. <laughs> this is like kind of like jank work that these people did when they built this car. I find myself correcting stuff all the time. What the fuck? You just throw that at me? I did. Okay. Well, when I cracked those two lines there, which were the rear brakes, uh -huh. and uh, nothing came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It made me realize that maybe the rear brakes were never working, <laughs> and I've been trying to stop it with only the fronts the entire time. Oh, that would explain a whole bunch. <laughs> That's rad. I like that. It's pretty fucking punk rock, man. <laughs> You're racing the car without rear brakes for... A year now? This car would be so much faster if I could slow down before I made turns. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, <laughs> that's definitely stands to reason. Because as it sits, man, I come into a corner hot and I'm just like, well, I hope I drift it. <laughs> I hope I slide. Holy. Crawl this thing. <clears throat> oh, let's wrap it around here. Yeah, we're gonna have to break. You want some big old chompers? Ah. Yes, dude. Nice. <laughs> that's a whole ass. <laughs> that's okay. That's damn near the entirety of a braking system, right there. <clears throat> so, what we got replaces all of that with something much cleaner, much lighter weight. This is it. <laughs> that replaces all of that. <laughs> that is, all of that combined is smaller than the booster itself. Yes. So this is all the lines, 
It's got the adjustable proportioning valve. Rad. Which is sweet, so we can adjust braking bias front to rear. Um, the master cylinder is way smaller. It's really, it's funny to me that a lot of people are like, man, race cars look so complicated. And it's funny because it, in practice, it's supposed to just be what's simpler, more effective. A lot of times, yes. Whatever's most reliable. It, it is may become be more complicated just because it's at such an intense level of it. So you're dealing with higher brake pressures, higher heat, higher all that stuff. Right. But it's, as far as the actual systems go, nine times out of 10, they're, they're simpler. They're just, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. And this will make this car that much more drivable. Cause yeah, I remember driving this car at the track and like every time I touched the brakes, it was like, here we go. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. It's done on the clock. <laughs> like uh, that's, yeah, this is the first car I spun at the track. Yeah. I'm pretty I, sure. Well, I believe it. I mean, I've spun yeah. it a billion times. Right. <laughs> Right. I'm not usually a person to spin, which is not exactly a good thing, but it can be. Well, right. the difficult part is going to be how to put all of this into the car. This is fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to start here. <laughs> Fair enough. So, I would imagine it's one of the random firewall bolts. I'm not sure. We're going to figure this out together, though. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god, that looks so good. <laughs> that looks Hold way on. cleaner. That was the fact that. That looks so much cleaner, so much better. That's so rad. I'm very, very happy with that. Already, that's yeah. worth it. <laughs> Man. I'm gonna shoehorn myself back over to the dash. <laughs> we'll, uh... Okay, good luck. Yeah, we'll see how Maybe I'll do some research and try and figure out what the rest of it's supposed to look like. Yes, please do. Okay. Okay. After a little bit of time under the car and a little bit of time under the dash for Mark, we have this thing situated. The lines are ran. They're not finalized yet. Um, but this looks sweet. So as you can see, we're going to adjust these a little bit and I'll zip tie them in and groom them in really nice. There's some factory mounts here, some holes in the firewall that we're probably gonna tie into. And uh, so besides got, making that a little bit dirty, that's so clean. So what we've got here is this one goes to the driver's side front. Off of that outboard T. Because if anybody's doing this at home, this is good information to have because it does take a little bit to find. If you can't, if no instructions came in the box. So right. it took us a minute to get what we needed to get. Right. So your proportioning valve, your adjustable proportioning valve mounts underneath to the, the factory bracket here on the bottom of the master cylinder. As you can see, this is this little nut right here. So that way you can adjust it right off the front. Your line runs like that. Uh, this right side, it, it's labeled here, it says in on top and out on this other side. So the inside, this goes to your front, um, your front brake on your driver's side. And then this one on the bottom goes to your front brake on the passenger side. The one on the top on the outside goes to your rear brake lines over there on the firewall. So and that's already all done up. It, uh, it's got the fancy logo and whatnot on it. <laughs> and we'll tie that in as well. I'm gonna make a little bracket for that and make it look nice. Get maybe some P-clips or something just to hold it in place. Right, so I think the main tell, and it should be the same all the way around, is that there's one fitting off one side and then there's a T off of the other, and the T is going to be your front brake lines. I just, I think it's just, the easiest way to put that, I think. Yeah, the T's your front brake lens. Yeah, so. so honestly, actually just looking at it and doing a tiny bit of research, that is super duper simple. <laughs> super simple and super worth it because we shaved some serious weight. We serious simplified weight. the entire brake system. It's gonna be way more reliable now and it can adjust front and rear bias, which I couldn't do before. Right, which uh, is badass. When I broke the rear lines free, no fluid came out, <laughs> which means I, it, I probably wasn't even 
running rear brakes all last racing season, which is probably why the car absolutely sucked and I kept overheating the front brakes. <laughs> yeah, and also why because he'd come into every single corner check this out. so sideways. I ordered rear brake rebuild kits because I thought they were seized. That's... So now that I know that no fluid came out, <laughs> The brake caliper is probably fine. Right. So I'm excited. Excited to see how this all turns out. I'll clean that up. You know, and we'll tighten everything up later and, and make sure everything's all kosher. But for today, that's what we wanted to get done. So we'll keep going with this build and we'll keep updating you guys as mm -hmm. we do. And uh, we got some other parts on the way. I got an aero separator on the way um, because there was a bunch of oil in the intake tract and in the intercooler. So since this is a track car, and it is a little bit built, <laughs> it's a good idea to run an arrow a separator rather than a catch can. Catch cans are kind of a hassle because you have to empty I feel them like, all the time. And I feel like anything boosted or high compression that's going to be turning a decent RPM should have an arrow a separator. Yeah, so. As, I mean, especially a race car. Especially I mean, just the, the rapid heating and, I mean, the rapid heating and superheating and then an autocross, superheating, cooling, superheating, cooling, superheating, cooling. I mean, that's just bound to wear things just kind of by design um yeah. or not by design but by by practice yeah. so all right so unfortunately we both still have day jobs so i gotta get ready for work he needs to go get some sleep because he's a graveyarder so next time you guys see us we'll be bleeding this brake system and uh you guys will actually should be super simple because there's no booster and no abs so right it's just a straight line to the rear and a straight line to the front brakes. So we'll tighten everything up and we'll do a nice bleed on everything and get some nice stop mm -hmm. fluid in there and get some uh, get some pedal feel action and whatnot. And then down the road, you guys will see us actually get to test all these modifications and see how much not only did simplifying the system uh, make everything better, but <clears throat> actually make it more trackable as well. Yeah, and it, it should be a lot more trackable now because as you guys probably can tell I don't I didn't have any brakes before <laughs> so. yeah, yeah so uh, yeah we'll catch you guys the next uh, we'll catch you guys the next day see you later